Oh, salam tonight, a nice to learn. Hmm. I want to say a few a few words on some of the some of the current events, some very important and interesting current events. Who's asked the thing with musical cat things? What's up, brother? Salam to the nice Shalom to the subscribers, to the brothers and sisters and mothers. But music cat thing to the acts, and this is, a, this is very interesting how all this just is, including with what happened with the so-called SEALs, the American Special Forces, up there in um, Afghanistan. There's some, there's some mathematics to all of this. Let's take the Afghanistan thing first. Now, hmm, they say the economy is up in smokes, the American economy. And this is no pun intended, but the American economy is up in smoke. Perhaps if they were dealing with this kind of smoke, righteously, it probably wouldn't be so bad. But be that as it may, hmm, Obama, the triple A ratings, and the economy, and double dip recession. Remember, who's the main one? See, here's how all these news events are connected. Now, the Somali situation, the drought, well, that's also a kind of a, you reap what you sow sort of situation, what's happening over there. People may not like to hear it a little bit spiritually and otherwise immature, but that's basically what's happening. But let's deal with the riots in London, the London riots. There's a video that we, um, that we have on the doc videos, and it's out there. You probably can find it on the internet perhaps for free or you can order a copy if you want to. The name of the video is um, is called Time and it's called Time and Judgment. And it's actually a UK video. A UK video called Time and Judgment. Take this down. Time and Judgment. Now the Time and Judgment video we think will give a very some very important um context and the background to the London riots, what's happening right now with the London riots over there. They say it's spreading, so forth and so on, and there's a lot of accusations. They call, they're calling it thuggery, you know, criminality. The English are really working their, their spell. You understand? Their, their, their spell, like a Hogwarts or whatever they want to call it. Their spell. They're saying that all of these um, protests, they say now it's not even about the, the killing of the 29-year-old, I think he was a taxi cab driver by the police and the police, quote, operation. No more talk about that. They're saying that the riots have nothing to do with what happened to that 20, um, that 29-year-old, seems like a black, uh, black man or minority, a person of color. Definitely he wasn't European. He was an Anglo-Saxon, so-called Protestant. You understand? But now there's a whole big protest. So this is the real Protestant movement that's going on. The real Protestant movement is the protests that are going on, the riots that are happening throughout London or in different areas, different neighborhoods throughout London. The background to the video, you need to check this video out, Time and Judgment. Time and Judgment is connected with this um, 2011 London riots. Time and Judgment, 2011. Now, I want you to keep this date in mind because if you look at the 16 signs, we put up a video not too long ago concerning the 16 signs of the time, very important signs. Now, when you start to see these signs happening almost at the same intensity simultaneously, it's not just they're going to happen one after the next. That's how the news may get to you. Well, that's how you may get the news about what just happened or what happened here or there. But when you start to see these 16 signs, and this is a video, one of our videos, the 16 signs of the, let's say, of the end. And the end is to be put into context, the end of um, the Gentile domination. The Bible calls it, Let's write this right down. The Bible calls it or the domination of the Gentiles or the dominion, you could say, of the Gentiles, the um, Gentiles, the Goyim, the times of the Gentiles. Use this called the times. 
and this is what this right here, the times of the Gentiles. Biblically speaking, if you go and look into your Bible and you do a little bit of studying, you'll find it talks about the times of the Gentiles. That the Gentiles were appointed to rule. In other words, the Greco, Roman, some can call it the Peckerwood, white supremacy, Anglo, Nazism, European hegemony or whatever like that. But that the, the Gentiles, biblically speaking, this is referring to the, the let's write this again here, the Gentiles, right, or the Goyim, what's known as the Goyim. In the Hebrew, it's called the Goyim the times of the Gentiles, the times of the Goyim. But we have to understand, first of all, who we are. You understand, as a once lost but now found, Beta Israel, the black Hebrews, and we as Ethiopian Hebrews, we have to understand who we are in context to what's going on. So if you don't know yourself, it's really hard to really know in the full scheme of things what's going on. So as far as the London riots, which music casting said acts, had made a, a, a comment about, does anybody know, I think, what's going on with the London riots? The London riots is a video called Time and Judgment. If you can't find it out there in Blockbusters or wherever you want to go get it, you can go to Doc Videos, and you can order that video, or you can look it up on the Internet, and you probably will find, maybe it's on the YouTube, it's not too sure, or maybe there's clips so you can at least see what it's about. But it's a very, very important video. It's talking about, like, the Brixton... It's encompassing the Brixton riots, uh, the Handsworth revolt. In fact, Steel Pulse, Steel Pulse had did some some mega albums. I mean, some very, I mean, timeless. I mean, revolutionary, which really encapsulated the the group Steel Pulse. I think the album was called Handsworth Riot. You know, Linton Quessy Johnson, a dub poet, up there in um in black in black England, you know, among the black Britons. He did some dub poetry, and there's other artists like Benjamin, the Bard of, the Bard of, um, I think Brixton or Birmingham, the Bard of Birmingham, um, Benjamin Zephaniah. These are all either Rastafari or Rastafari-inspired artists, you know, and musicians, psalmists, singers, prophets, you can say, who all spoke about it. So this puts everything in a better context. See. People think that these things are gone, so they try to act like, where does this come from? They're just thieves, they're just thugs, they're just criminals. Now, how does this connect with the whole economic, this engineered economic um, downturn, especially in the American economy? It's interesting, because this is happening in the same sort of a sequence as the run-up to the 2008 elections. In fact, it's amazing because black folks don't want to call a spade a spade, what they're doing with Obama, we're not a big fan of Obama. Let's just put that disclaimer out there. We're not a big fan of him, but we think that if this is a so-called fair system, you know, saying, why don't you just give that black man an opportunity, you know, saying, and why don't he in some sense take that opportunity to be the president? We think they took too long in, you know, waiting for the Republican, the Tea Party, the terrorist party, you understand? What, remember, these are the same folks. If you look at a lot of, like, that Bachman um, – that Bachman chicken and some others out there, she's like the real radical, she's, she's like the Sarah Palin on steroids. If you look at what they're saying, they're saying a lot of things which are awfully, for lack of a better word, it sounds repetitious, but it keeps going on, so we've got to keep calling that spade a spade, racist. She's talking about, wow, back in the time of um, um, slavery, you understand, Every, the, the, the black people had like a nuclear family, like a, a father and a mother, you know, when they were in slavery. And now, X amount of years after so-called blacks are free and their first black president, look at all these broken black homes and, you know, either single mother uh, households, as though they don't know how all this was engineered. See COINTELPRO. See COINTELPRO. COINTELPRO. You have to look at that again because these things may not be called by these names. But it's the same game. You know what I mean? It's like as you grow up and you start to see what, you know, learn history, learn, you know, things of the past. Some people not into the old black and white movies and footage and stuff. They, you know, they want to see new color stuff with a bunch of special effects. But as you get older and get wiser, you begin to check out other things. After you, bit, you know, you done did that, you done, so many times. You start to check out things. And some of you know about this. When you start to check out older stuff, historical stuff, and you see it's the same schemes 
the same ideas, the same kind of conspiracies which were going on in the past is basically the same conspiracies going on today. This is why they say, like, history is so important. The thing that was, the Bible says, the thing that will be. So if you don't know what happened before, then it seems like these things are new things. So they're playing on the people's ignorance and everything when they try to act like the riots that are going on in London have nothing to do with nothing. It's just people want to steal stuff and people want to burn down stuff. And, it's, you know what I mean? What they're not looking at is the real oppression or downpression of the people. And this, this goes across the bands of so-called race and color and religion. But mainly, you understand, it's a fear of a black planet. This is what it's all about. And Obama kind of brings out that fear in them. So therefore, they've engineered this economic crisis in a sense to be almost like that of Nancy. You remember the Nancy? You, you know what I'm talking about, a Nancy? the Nancy fables and the Aesop's, the Aesop's fables, where they tie up this lion, all these little ants or whatnot. I think they, they, they manage, or Nancy managed to tie up a, a lion, and there's an old African proverb that talks about it. This is what they're doing. Obama should have just raised the debt ceiling, you understand, and she, he should have showed himself presidential, but he tried to, you know, be the... I don't want to say nice guy, but it seems like he was being the nice guy and everything and work with the Republicans and do a whole bunch of other stuff. And even after all that said and done, they're going to stick this to him. This is the same thing he did back in October, the October surprise of 2008. They engineered an economic disaster. They already know the economy, the money system, all that just garbage. It's just that they have everybody so trained and there's no other um, um, seeming way out. You understand? If people want to eat, they need money. If they're going to live somewhere, they need money. So they, they, they're kind of stuck in this. But a lot of people are beginning to, the wheels are turning. They're beginning to see how money adds debt, that other video, and, and these other kind of videos out there which is exposing the whole, the whole um, scheme. But what they always neglect is to put white supremacy. In other words, it's, it's, see, if white people, if white people even recognize, and a lot of white people even recognize this, you understand, but they haven't seen too many alternatives. See, because even they are victims of white supremacy because we're in this particular time period. So, once again, not to be long-winded on this, but once again about the 2011 London riots, it has everything to do with economy, basically standard of living. But behind the economy and the bad economy for the Gentiles or the Goyim white supremacy has everything to do with the rise of the black messiah. It has everything to do with the rise of the Christ consciousness among the once lost but now found date to Israel. In other words, when black people back in the 60s and, and before that and even after that started to really um, state their claim in the scheme of things, you know, in the equal society so-called, even though Obama even knows about that constitution. This is why some of those Tea Partyists were trying to bring that out, that he's not really pro-American because he's mocking the Constitution, he's mocking the Bible. He wasn't really doing no such thing. If you really put it into context, he's saying that you all have a hypocritical system. Basically, he's a legalist, he's a lawyer, he understands that. So he's saying that you all want to do this by, like, which part of the Bible? This is why we're not governed in so-called, quote, end quote, America. See, this is where it gets confusing because we're living in a false image. We're living in the image of the Gentiles. But it's a new world order. Not the new world order that they think because there's competing influences. There, there is China. China has its own ideas. It's going along with some things, you know what I mean? It's learning the dance steps. But China has its own ideas. It's very clear. You understand? The Arabs or the Mohammedans, the Islamists or Islamo-fascists, they want to set up a caliphate, al-Qaeda. They want to set up their own new world order. So even the Islamists have their new world order ideas. You understand? And then you have other peoples, too, who have new world order. Europeans have their European economic market. You have those pro-Americanists who, who, who think of America as an empire. You understand? Who have their ideas. So there's a divide between some of the conservatives who are ultra-biblical. They look at... Ink, they look at um, um, Europe to be part of that, you know, this is what they've been taught in their religious psychology that this, 
this, this antichrist is going to come out of Europe. That's why some of them say Obama can't be the antichrist because the antichrist has to come out of Europe according to what they believe. Watch the 700 Club and the rest of that, and, and you should get those ideas. You know what I'm saying? Just to understand basically where they're in other words, know thyself, just like a good chess player, and know thy enemies, and mainly know the game that you're playing. You understand how to play on the square and how to play off the square. So a lot of things are being played off the square, if you understand what I mean. You understand? A lot of people think that everything has to be played on the square. So when they see things happening off the square, they're like, I can't believe this. Oh, my goodness. Somebody's going to get in trouble, then nobody gets in trouble. You understand? I mean, just think about just what happened recently with them paying all those billions of dollars. Think of how much it costs to fight wars and everything. And then they see they have to cut programs for children, you understand, who are citizens and, and you know, and, and for people in the inner cities and for old people and people who worked all their lives and they took a portion out their check. Now they want to say, oh, well, we have to cut this to balance the budget. I heard somebody on one of these news shows today. And he said, he said, you know what, we could always print more money. I was like, what? Did you just say that? You know, I turned and I was like, did you just say that? Yeah, he said, we could just print more money. Money as debt, it's, it's an illusion. It, 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 it's an illusion. Yes, it, you know, even when you are in that illusion, it doesn't mean it doesn't have an effect on your heart and your mind. It's, it's like psyop, psychological. But be that as it may, the London riots has to do with with not just economics, you know what I'm saying? But see, when we, are, when we understand that economics means managing a household, it means managing a household. That's what the word means, managing a household. Those, those poor people, the people who live in the worst conditions, you know what I'm saying? They've been left out of the economic forecasting. Like here in America, they're talking about the debt ceiling. And when you hear these Republicans you understand, some of these radical Tea Party, ones who are balanced at Tea Party, they're like, we don't want to pass no debt on to our children. Notice the key thing. When they're talking about our children, they are talking about their children. They're talking about their, their children, not talking about your children, definitely not talking about I and I children or our children as a people. You understand? So we hear that, and they, they make it seem like, well, we, we just want to get the debt under, under wraps because we don't want to pass all these debt. On. So now you hear all them talking about, we don't want to pass no debt on to our children and so forth. So what they do, they plan to cut programs. And so on, on this account, it's probably, you know, we have to give Obama within this limited scheme of things, you know, give him a little bit of, a little bit of kudos there, you know, saying, even just for the principle of saying, how can we cut these things, you know, for the old people, for, for poor people, the, the school, the inner city programs, as a community organizer. His heart probably, and maybe his wife and other, other of his black liberation um, upbringing, because that's part of his general philosophy. He has a lot of stuff going on there. We, we still wonder which way is he going to go. You know what I'm saying? But be that as it may, we did, like we said, we didn't want to go all off on this. But anyway, the London riots, the London riots, yes, it began off with the killing of this 29-year-old um, non-Gentile, um, non-white, Youth, in other words, a black youth. We can put it into, put it on the square. Black or white, he's a black youth. You understand? Not a gray youth, but a black youth. You understand? So the background, if you want to get a better context, you understand, to what the background of all this London rioting and what's happening, and you need to check out Time and Judgment. It's a UK video. We have it as our, our doc videos. Check out lojsociety.org. Click on the tab for doc videos, the videos tab. And you'll, you'll even find this video there, or you can check it out. Take, take down the title and check it out on the Internet for yourself. It's called Time and Judgment. Time and Judgment. It gives you a historical background to what's going on, particularly, particularly in England and particularly in that London, the England, the British, the U.K., so forth and so on. Now, as far as the 16 signs, it says an increase in lawlessness and re rebellion. If you look up at our 16 signs, of the end, the end of white supremacy, you know, the end of the dominion or domination of the Gentiles or the times of the Gentiles, it's, it's one of the major signs right here. So let's put a star right there. Now, two other points. One other point we want to speak on, but we'll do that in a separate video that's somewhat connected to this, very much so, is the, um, the 22 uh, 
uh, Special Forces, uh, SEAL Team 6, you understand, which um, reportedly were shot down by a so-called lucky, um, a lucky shot from, I guess, the Taliban or somebody like that up in um, Afghanistan. So they lost 22. And that 2-2 two, two is just like there's a mathematical formula going on here. And one will say, is somebody doing this? Is it these people, those people, is it Jews? You understand? No, but I think that the key, you understand, the key to a lot of this is found in Judaism, and particularly in the true Judaism, and that's of the line of the tribe of Judah. You understand? Let's go to the root and to the truth. But anyway, the London riots, of course, there's more to come, but if you want to see where it's going to, and want to be able to read the signs based on what's being reported and what's going on. The 16 signs of the end and time and judgment. You understand? And all this has to do with the so-called end of the domination of white supremacy or what is otherwise known as the times of the Gentiles. But the pushback right now is basically economically. The pushback is economically. Mm-hmm. But they recognize that so many of the people are so hooked into the money, they, there's such a love, a worship of money, that if they hit the money, people will forget perhaps everything else and will begin to think instinctually, animalistically, and then they can corral them. But riots, even, even though some of it is probably engineered, you understand, but it's a bad thing even when they start to you know, dabble in those things, even for political or whatever expediency, because it starts to cut grooves, you understand? And remember, there's more of the downpressed people on the face of the earth than the downpressers, the overs. So um, there's more signs to come, but take this down and we'll, we'll get back at you. Shalom.